Welcome to Rotary and Serving Our Community. My name is Wade Nomura and today we're going to take a look at actually the structure of Rotary. We've had all these shows where we talk about what Rotary does, but to actually take a look at Rotary itself is kind of fascinating, you know, where it came from, where it's going. So we're going to start with this show being the history of Rotary and Rotary then and now. To start with the first slide we have is the history and we are going to do this on PowerPoint. So uh, we will be looking at First of all, the structure. Now, what is Rotary? Oftentimes, we've been asked, what is Rotary? This is what the, quote, elevator speech is, but oftentimes, you will ask an individual Rotarian what Rotary actually is, and, and they will tell you they're given experiences. You see, Rotary is different for everybody. Everybody takes Rotary and does Rotary for different reasons, and what's fascinating or unique about Rotary is that there's a place for each individual that joins the organization, and this is what we take a look at. Our founder, Paul Harris, was the originator. He is actually the first person that um, is claimed to have started Rotary. Paul Harris was a lawyer um, that was back in 1905 when he started Rotary by meeting with a small group of four gentlemen. Uh, this happened in Chicago, Illinois. Now, a unique or fascinating thing about Paul Harris, he was a lawyer, um, was married to Jean Thompson. They had no children. He spent a lot of his time wandering around doing a business practices around the country, not really settling into one specific place. And for that reason, uh, it's believed that he started this group, Rotary, as a network for friendships, because oftentimes he would come to different cities and would not be able to find those people or friendships that quickly. So he felt Rotary would be a good way to network. And what's fascinating about Rotary, if you look at the original four Rotarians that first met in 1905, in that February in uh, Chicago, Illinois. Gustavus Lohr, Gustavus Lohr was a mining engineer. Sylvester Scheel was a coal dealer. Hiram Shorey, merchant tailor. And Paul Harris, uh, Paul Harris was a lawyer, as we said. Now these four, if you notice, all had different backgrounds, different professions, and different areas where they came to. One of the things that Rotary continues to do this day is to make sure that there's what's called a classification system. In other words, they don't want to have a dominance of one profession in each of the clubs. It's broken down no more than 10% of one specific classification or vocation uh, can be represented in that club. It was a few um, weeks later, actually, that two more people joined that group of four. Um, Harry Ruggles, who was a printer, and Will Jensen. If you visit a club, um, about 50% of these clubs are actually singing clubs. And what happened, it was credited that Harry Ruggles actually became the singer of the group or the club itself. Rumor has it that Gustavus Lohr, who's, by the way, his was the first office that they had the meeting in, was quite the jokester. He loved telling jokes. Um, oftentimes the jokes were eh, not quite appropriate for general audiences. And for that reason, Harry Ruggles hated that. And he would belt out a song every time Harry would try, I'm sorry, every time Gustavus would try and, try and tell a joke. And so to this day, there are still 50% of the Rotary Clubs will actually sing at the beginning of the meeting. And that was because we didn't want to become known as a bad joke organization. Um, we could actually see Rotary Headquarters uh, International. There's an actual model that was constructed showing the first meeting place of Rotary International. Room 711 of the Unity Building was actually where um, Gustavus Lohr had his meeting place. We are known as Rotarians because each meeting at that time, they would go from office to office to office, um, sharing the hosting of each of the club meetings. This is how we became known as Rotarians. We would rotate from club to club to club at that time. Now it's uh, Rotary has continued that name, uh, Rotarians now are considered, quote, the movers and shakers. What else is interesting is that, Her uh, I'm sorry, Paul Harris was not the first president of Rotary. He was actually the third president. The first president was Sylvester Scheel. And uh, what's fascinating about that, Paul Harris actually did not want to take a lead role in this group that he actually organized and started. What else is unique about Paul Harris was the fact that even though he's uh, credited, of course, for starting Rotary and Rotary International, most people felt that he was very proud of this organization, which in fact is, uh, well, fascinating part, 
he actually left Rotary for a while because he felt that the organization was going in the wrong direction, a direction that he thought was not quite appropriate for his goals and vision of how he saw the organization going. So that is one fascinating part. He did come back, by the way, to Rotary and uh, reestablished and uh, ended up uh, passing away and was, is buried right now in the Chicago area, right next to probably within 100 yards of the international, first international president of the Lions. So the fascinating part is even to this day, they're still competing uh, at, at the grave areas itself. By the way, Rotary and Paul Harris has a nicer plot than uh, the president, uh, Charter President of the Lions. We'll take a look at civilization in movement. Uh, this is where the, I would say, the evolution of our logo came from. The first logo shows a picture of a wagon wheel. That wagon wheel was developed and designed way back. Um, I think it was in uh, 1907. And later on, it became, with the second one, it shows a wagon wheel in motion. And that's when civilization and movement actually became the theme or slogan for Rotary International, well, Rotary at that time. But what is fascinating about that, that slogan actually only lasted for one year. And that is one of the reasons why many Rotarians have no idea that that was our original slogan. It would then morphed into what you see there is kind of a wavy wheel, wagon wheel. And uh, later after that, in 1923, you see the, the logo, the traditional logo in black in the lower uh, left-hand corner. That actually created a keyway in that to make it an actual working gear. So that keyway slot was added a year later. And that became our traditional mark up until 2013, where the new logo was then presented by Rotary International. It was unveiled, and what's fascinating or unique about that new logo is uh, that the organizer, I'm sorry, the company, Siegel and Gale, decided that it would be more appropriate to drop Rotary International because Rotary is international, and as in the case with Nike, Coca-Cola, Pepsi, those kind of companies, they are international, but they don't actually have to advertise they're international. So um, Siegel and Gale felt it appropriate that Rotary drop the international part of it, knowing that they are an international organization. The other fascinating part of this one logo that you see, the, the wheel itself, is modified. This logo is a blown up image of what we use on letterheads and business cards. So it's a very small representation of that. I put this up there because this shows you how the logo itself could be modified to fit um, in use itself. Now, in 1910, we had our first Rotary Convention, and you'll see by the banners that different clubs were, quote, represented. You'll see Chicago, by the way, Chicago, which was the first club, was known as Chicago 1. The second club was San Francisco, that's known as San Francisco 2. Then it went to Oakland. Oakland became uh, Rotary Club number three, or known as Oakland three. Now, all these clubs were started by Paul Harris, and so you can see he started in Chicago, but then moved all over the country starting these other clubs. Uh, then the, second, the fourth one is Seattle four and Los Angeles five. Now, I'm hoping that there's not a lot of people from Chicago, I'm sorry, from uh, Seattle watching this show because it's an interesting point. It was found that um, Los Angeles actually was the first one to send their um, application in before Seattle. So ideally, it would have been, if it was chronological order, Los Angeles, or LA-5 now as it's known, would have been LA-4. And Seattle, which is now known as Seattle-4, would have actually been Seattle-5. That was if it was done in chronological order. The board of directors felt that Los Angeles didn't have the prestige as Seattle. So the reason for the switch was that specific reason. Uh, evidently, uh, there was politics back then. Believe it or not, there's probably a little politics even now in Rotary. Rotary International. In 1912, Winnipeg became the first chartered club internationally. Um, 1912, they just celebrated the centennial. And by 1921, we were actually represented in six different continents. Fascinating part, uh, at that time when we became Rotary International, we started hosting these international conventions, which is a one, once in a year, uh, once a year event where all of Rotary gets together and actually has this huge convention. The largest conventions, by the way, were held in Japan 
and there were 41 and uh, 42,000 people in attendance of that one. This coming year, we will have our international convention in Korea, in Seoul, Korea, with an anticipated uh, attendance of 40,000 people. So if you think about that, it is pretty, pretty amazing how large Rotary has gone. That, by the way, also represents the 200 countries that Rotary is in. Rotary motto. This was presented um, at one of the early conventions in 1910. He profits most who serves his fellows most. Uh, that being a mouthful, it was changed in 1911 to service, not self. And it took until 1989 that we have our current th theme, that is service above self. On the next slide, which is kind of fascinating, I put this up there because this is actually a pin. Uh, this pin represents an individual that has been honored by Rotary International. This uh, service above self award is the highest in, in, individual award given by Rotary International to any individual person for volunteer service in and out of Rotary. It is voted on by the Board of Directors and each year a maximum of 150 people will be given this award. And by the way, there's about five or 600 applications each year that come forward. So that's a very prestigious award. The reason I put this on the presentation itself is because they are so rare that oftentimes people will be wearing these pins and have no idea what that pin actually represents. And that's why I want to present it on this show. So when you see that, that is actually one of the highest awards that, um, that that individual could achieve in Rotary. World contributions. Some of the organizations that have been uh, attributed to um, Rotary and assisted by, starting with the Boy Scouts of America, started by two Rotarians, actually a year after Rotary, Rotary was uh, started. UNESCO, organized by Rotary groups uh, as one of the first efforts at peace. The United Nations, believe it or not, the United Nations was originally an effort started by Rotary, Rotary and Rotary International. Their mission was to create peace in the uh, European areas. And the original United Nations session actually had 49 of those seats filled by Rotarians. To this day, we still have a permanent seat on the United Nations floor. Easter Seals, polio eradication, the largest effort ever, humanitarian effort ever, um, to eradicate a disease has been um, the polio eradication, and that was led by Rotary and Rotary International. Bill and Melinda Gates have jumped on, as has the World Health Organization. They have done outstanding things. Each of the three groups or entities uh, take claim for doing what they could to eliminate this. Unfortunately, um, all three groups don't always mention the other two groups, but polio eradication actually started with a club in the Philippines that felt that they could eradicate polio from the entire country of the Philippines. They were successful in doing so. And in doing that, that became the world model that is being used even to this day. Polio at one time affected thousands of children each day. Uh, currently, we have at this time only seven cases uh, being diagnosed this year. So we've gone from thousands in one day to seven. Our hopes are this year to see our last case of polio in the world. That would then follow with a three-year certification. And at that time, the, the world would be then considered polio free. This will be only the second time this has ever happened in history. Famous people. Taking a look at the list of famous people, we show, uh, I pulled quite a few of uh, the names that are more recognizable. This list is probably four or 500. But I wanted to share with you a fascinating part, Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong, the, the astronauts that were credited with uh, walking on the moon. Both of them were Rotarians. And believe it or not, as Buzz Aldrin was walking on the moon, Neil Armstrong was taking pictures or, or photographing the actual walk on the moon's surface. When they jumped out of the, the spacecraft, Neil Armstrong actually took with him a rotary pin and placed it on the surface of the moon. So right now we have a rotary pin someplace on the surface of the moon. Women in Rotary. When we have a talk about women in Rotary, unfortunately, uh, because the organization has been so old, started in 1905, that there was a contract, I'm sorry, the Constitution and bylaws actually read that women were not allowed to be in Rotary. I put this uh, picture up there because Sylvia Whitlock became the person credited with bringing women into Rotary. 
She had originally joined Rotary in 1976, knowing that women weren't allowed to be in Rotary. And the way she did, and three of her friends, also women, joined the club, were by putting in their names as S. Whitlock and using only the first initial. That way Rotary International would have no idea that they were actually women that had joined this club. Well, in the early 80s, the, a gentleman came from Rotary International and noticed that there were women sitting at this club uh, meeting. And he first said, well, that's great that you would have wives attending the meeting for his sake. He thought that it was an important meeting and he was, quote, the important guy. Well, when they said that they were actually members of the Rotary Club, the gentleman then went on to say, you realize women aren't allowed in Rotary. If you do not eliminate the women from your club roster, your charter, uh, we will be forced to pull the charter of your club. You will no longer be a Rotary Club. So the Rotary Club of Duarte, being a cooperative bunch, actually handed the gentleman the charter, said, here you go. We don't want the charter. From that day, they were then known as, quote, the ex-Rotary Club of Duarte. And they went that way until it was actually solved and resolved at the Supreme Court. The first time it went to the State Supreme Court of California, and um, th that court agreed with, the, um, with Rotary International that, in fact, they could be an exclusive club. And then went to the Supreme Court of the United States, and the Supreme Court then reversed that finding, stating that Rotary International is a public entity and that they could no longer bar um, people from joining that club or the organization. So that's when women were allowed in Rotary. That was in May of 1987. It took two, year, two more years to, before the women were actually allowed in officially because in 1989, we have what's called, and it's every three years, the Council on Legislation. And at that time, that's when the bylaws could be changed. And so it was officially in 1989 that women were allowed in Rotary. Rotary's guiding principles. There are four guiding principles of Rotary. The first one is the object of Rotary, four-way test, uh, classification principle, and the avenues of service. We'll take a look at each one of those four. The first one is the object of Rotary. Now, the object of Rotary was actually written in 1910. And uh, if you ask any Rotarian to recite that, they would probably uh, turn red and say there's no way they could do that. But if you take a look at how that was actually broken down, which later became part of the principles itself. Um, first, uh, development for acquaintances as an opportunity to serve. That was then converted to club service. The second one, ethical standards in business. That became known as vocational service. The third, uh, working with communities, so community service. And the fourth one has to do with international service. So the objects of Rotary actually were modified to then be part of what Rotary has today are the four avenues of service. The four-way test. Four-way test is um, originally written by a gentleman named Herbert J. Taylor in 1932. He actually developed this one. Uh, his business was in coming together and buying failing businesses, putting those together and flipping them for profit. He bought an aluminum plant in, in Chicago area and actually put this up there, citing that he asked each of his employees to live by the four-way test. In doing so, they would not only benefit the company, which was not his primary objective, but also by giving them more value for their life. So that's where the four-way test came from. It wasn't until 1943 that Rotary International adopted the four-way test, which we use to this day to help test for example, what we do and if, in fact, it is the right thing to do. A few years later, 1957, Herbert J. Taylor became the RI president. So that's kind of a fascinating way for a, a gentleman to put his contributions forward in front of his presidency. The Code of Conduct of Rotarians, uh, this was will be found in just about every written, published document, including our uh, monthly Rotarian magazine. This kind of tells about the ethics, uh, ethical standards that we as Rotarians are asked to live by. The next one is the Declaration of Rotarians in Business and Professions. This is, uh, was written in 1989, and the idea of this one was that uh, Rotarians were asked to abide by these. And what's fascinating, on the second one, number eight, it's asked that uh, no benefits or discounts be given to Rotarians. And the reason for that is, is that 
Rotarians are, are asked to treat everyone fairly and equally, and by doing so, that would include your business practices. Giving somebody a discount, special privileges for business because they're a Rotarian does not pass the four-way test, and that's why we include this as part of our declaration. The avenues of service. We have club service, vocational service, community service, uh, international service, and youth service, and we're gonna go over each one of those starting with club service. Club service has to do with the individual Rotarians. It's your membership. It has to do with the value of that membership and what your club is doing to make sure that each and every Rotarian gets what they want out of Rotary because there's a lot of time commitment and money, financial commitments to this. Community service. This is where we as Rotarians actually try and do our best. And when I say that, if we are an effective club and an effective organization, we should be impacting that community, making changes and benefiting that community. If we aren't doing that, we as an organization and as Rotary Clubs are not doing the best we can. And so community service holds a high um, portion of what we actually try and do, do uh, for the world. International service, it's another portion that we take a look at. There are individual Rotarians and probably only 10% actually get to do hands-on international projects. But the impacts that we have, both community-wise and globally, are what makes Rotary stand apart from the rest of the world. And I think that is the important part. For us to fit into the world and make huge impacts in the community, we have to also take a look at how globally we are affecting that. Because if all of the things that we do in Rotary work out, then we should also have this happening internationally or globally. Vocational service. Vocational service has to do with the individual Rotarian. It is the only avenue of service that deals with the individual. And what this is, is this is what we bring to the table, we as individuals. For example, I'm a landscape contractor. My contributions will oftentimes be in either landscaping projects, specific projects, or working internationally, doing water projects, which you've seen uh, I've been involved with a number of times. Because as a landscaper, this is what I do and, and what I have the knowledge and base to do. Youth service. Youth service is where we actually take a look at the next generation. Um, I think from junior high school, grammar school, high school, up to college, and then beyond that to the young professionals. So youth service plays a key part in not only bringing in future Rotarians, but also in bringing out the ethics that we have as Rotarians, making sure that the next generation is aware of the moral and ethical standards that we as Rotarians hold to make sure that the future leaders of our communities have the same thing. Classification system. The classification system has to do with um, our professions. And the classification we have uh, is based on that. And as I said before, only 10% of each club can be made up of one specific profession or classification. Rotary is run by um, a board of directors. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna send you to this page. Our current president, Ravi Ravindran from Sri Lanka is the president. Following him will be next year, John Germ. John Jibber is from Tennessee. Following uh, him will be Ian Risley. Um, he is the president nominee and Ian is from Australia. Brad Howard is serving as our current uh, director. He represents all of the western states and part of Canada, including Hawaii. And uh, that's one area where there are 17 worldwide. The picture showing the RI presidents, uh, RI presidents, as I mentioned, in the center is Ravi Ravindran, who is a, a current president. And by the way, we had an interview with him on one of the shows. Following him will be uh, John Germ of Tennessee and then Ian Risley um, on the right from uh, Australia. Now what you notice uh, about this and what's fascinating, Rotary Constitution says that the RI president every three years will come from North America. That's actually mandated, that's cited in our Constitution. So every three years we usually have a gentleman from either the United States, Canada, or possibly Mexico, but North America, because that was the origin of Rotary, has that prestige or distinction of having one president every three years. The RI directors, as I said, shows, showing a picture of them, uh, Brad Howard current, following him will be John Matthews. And if you look at the picture below that, it actually shows the zone designation itself, the map. And this is how it's broken down. This is Rotary's uh, hierarchy, basically, of how um, it's broken down geographically. The Rotary Foundation. It was started by Arch Klump 
1917. Um, there was money left over from one of the conventions. That was the uh, Kansas City Convention with a total amount of $26.50. The Rhodey Foundation has since gone on to become one of the uh, most prestigious foundations and rates quite high in Charity Navigator, uh, usually in the top three or four. And the reason for that is the contributions that you make to the Rhodey Foundation close to 100% of the money you contribute will come back to um, a project specific. So uh, that's a good turnaround. And that was one of the reasons why Bill and Melinda Gates actually contributed with us on polio eradication, knowing that 100% of that money was gonna go to the specific cause, no administrative costs. We look at the picture of the Rotary Foundation. Uh, these are the logos, followed by uh, what Rotary does, the Rotary Foundation itself, or TRF. The Rotary Foundation is the actual doing part of Rotary. We have two, the organization itself, which is Rotary International, and the foundation. The foundation is where we actually do the work from, so that funds our projects. Rotary Foundation has six areas of focus. The six areas include water and sanitation, community economic development, child and maternal health, basic education literacy, disease prevention, and peace and conflict resolution. These six areas must be met if you're gonna do a, a project, a global project that is being funded by the Rotary Foundation and Rotarians must fit within one of these six areas. Um, picture that we show here, I have three different pictures showing some of the impacts that we had, everything from water projects in Mexico or around the world. The other picture shows a playground. That playground was in Carpinteria. That was a million dollar playground. And uh, the picture in the center is uh, Arroyo Grande. They're actually bandstand. Those were all funded by, uh, in part, uh, by Rotary Foundations. So that kind of shows what we have. The last uh, slide that I have is on Rotary itself. And a lot of this information we as Rotarians could find uh, at Rotary Central. So you'll take a look at Rotary Central and My Rotary. Um, there's also a website there called pearls.org where you can get a lot of this information from. I wanted to go over this because I don't know how many times we as Rotarians are asked, what's Rotary? Well, this is the structure itself and kind of a history, how it comes forward. And in doing so, and looking at where we came from and where we're going, we have a good vision of what Rotary actually is. Rotary is an organization of people, members, trying to do good in this world. They carry the highest ethical standards and they are willing to donate a lot, if not all of their time, to making sure that people around us are doing what they can and getting what they can not only in our communities, but worldwide. With that, if you have an opportunity, please visit one of the Rotary Clubs and ask anybody that you see wearing a Rotary pin, hey, what's Rotary? And with that, thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed the show. We will have a follow-up on this, talking about the foundation at one of the upcoming episodes. So thank you very much, and we'll talk to you soon.